প্রিয় দর্শক সালাম আলাইকুম চ্যানেল আই এক্সক্লুসিভ ডিসকাশন অনুষ্ঠান থেকে আপনাদেরকে এক রাশ প্রীতি শুভেচ্ছা আর ভালোবাসা জানিয়ে শুরু করছি আপনাদের প্রিয় অনুষ্ঠান চ্যানেল আই এক্সক্লুসিভ অনুষ্ঠানটি আজকে আমাদের অতিথি হয়ে এসেছেন ব্রিটিশ পার্লামেন্টের অত্যন্ত জনপ্রিয় এবং প্রভাবশালী সদস্য কনজারভেটিভ দলের মেম্বার একই সাথে বিগত সরকারের সময়ে সাবেক এডুকেশন সেক্রেটারি হিসেবে যিনি সর্বাধিক জনপ্রিয় এবং সর্বক্ষেত্রে ব্যাপক আলোড়ন তুলেছিলেন তিনি হচ্ছেন আমাদের সকলেরই প্রিয়ভাজন প্রিয় মো নিখি মর্গান এমপি রাইট অনারেবল নিখি মর্গান এমপি আমাদের স্টুডিওতে অতিথি হয়ে এসেছেন চ্যানেল এক্সপ্রেসিভ অনুষ্ঠানে কথা বলার আগে নিখি মর্গান এমপির সাথে আপনাদেরকে পরিচয় করে দিচ্ছি আমি চলে যাচ্ছি নিখি মর্গান এমপির সাথে ইউ আর মোস্ট ওয়েলকাম ইন হিয়ার थैंक यू वेरी मच इट्स लवली टू बी हियर एट चैनल लाइव या थैंक यू थैंक यू वेरी मच फर्स्ट यू नो द I know it's a, all, just now parliament passed the bank bill and the lords said it's a landmark victory people are thinking that might be something in happening here maybe a lot uh, lords and uh, how comes maybe cause something conflict about the bank bill but at the end that's a landmark victory we see it see so the uh, in the television and the media as well so i just want to you know the what do you think about the the bill just passed you You're right, it's a landmark moment for the uh, bill to have been passed in the British Parliament. And what this means is the Prime Minister now has the ability to say to the rest of the EU, I'm going to give you notice that the UK is going to leave and we're going to start the negotiations about how we are going to leave. So I suppose it's the first thing that implements the result of the referendum last year. And the fact that the uh, House of Commons and the House of Lords overwhelmingly supported the bill, despite what some people worried about yes. uh, is an important moment there are things that people would have liked to have seen in the bill and they yeah. will now be obviously covered uh, in the negotiations and parliament will remain members of parliament like me will remain very involved in this process yeah uh, that's what uh, you just mentioned about that that uh, you uh, passed the bill the selenium victory but i just want to know what is the party view on undocumented resident post brexit because you know the uh, Boris Johnson the, the mayor of while he was the mayor of London and he said during the break he said he is in favor of an armed amnesty for all undocumented residents what is the view of the government and the Tory party yeah. well obviously I'm not a government minister anymore um, yes. but um, I think we're going to have a new immigration bill as a result of leaving the European Union and one of the debates is going to be about how non eu citizens are treated in the same way or differently from eu citizens there were lots of promises made during the referendum campaign by those who wanted to leave the european union and i was not on that side of the argument i thought we were better I'm, to stay yes. I, I know, I know. Uh, but uh, that actually people would be able to come into this country more easily um, i think immigration policy will remain very tight the prime minister is a former home secretary and people in this country are clearly concerned about immigration and the impact yeah. it has uh, on communities and uh, and everything and so i don't see that it's going to get any easier for people to be uh, to be moving here we'll be i think more certain about the skills and the industries the sectors yeah, in which we need people to to welcome people here uh, uh, what about the, um, the 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 people already from the european countries they already came in here yeah. living in here what's uh, what do you think after the brexit what the situation will be although i know the home secretary and the treasurer may as well they said they want to confirm from the european you know the british people those who are living in now Yeah. So the problem is that non EU immigrant overwhelmingly voted to Brexit in the last referendum. Therefore the government should introduce sympathetic measures for the non EU migrant living in the UK after completion of the Brexit. What do you think? Well, you asked two different questions there really. The first is about the EU nationals already living here in the United Kingdom. And the prime minister and home secretary have been very clear that they want people to be able to stay. that their rights are not affected by Brexit so nobody's rights about staying here or anything else have changed uh, yet um, and we don't know obviously what is going to be negotiated yes. with the other EU countries um, what's been talked about is a date being set by which if people were here then uh, they will be able to stay and their rights will not be affected in terms of non EU migrants yeah. well i think that's again i think um, people are concerned about the, uh, generally EU non EU um and we have to see really what's going to happen to the numbers and i think to see what happens to the different industries it'll be about skills and whether people um coming here uh have the skills 
that I think are needed, whether it's in our NHS or whether it's in high-tech industries or in academia, uh, and seeing whether people are going to be offering uh, those skills. I think that's the way in which government policy is going to develop. But at the moment, obviously, it's being debated within government, um, and we wait to hear those announcements. In terms of economy, the, I know that people who have predicted that the, even the analysts also predicted the economic condition will be down after the Brexit. Yeah. But in reality, we see that the economic forecast that continues, GDP also are up. So what do you think? That's, you passed the bill just now. So what do you think? Can you clarify about the economic condition of the uh, post-Brexit? I, I think it's. I know it's a certainty, but yeah, exactly. it's very difficult. I think. I, I think people did expect there to be um, a, a hit on the economy, and fortunately, that hasn't proven to be the case. And so, that's good news for everybody living here. Obviously, the fall in the value of the pound um, do, does hit people. It hits people when they uh, go abroad. Obviously, it hits people um, in terms of uh, those uh, bringing goods in from outside to sell here or to use in their businesses. And we'll obviously have to wait to see when Article 50 is triggered by the Prime Minister mm -hmm. and throughout the negotiations. And a lot will depend, I think, on the final deal that is agreed with the European Union as to the impact it has on our economy. And if you look at the budget that Philip Hammond, the Chancellor, announced last week yes. in terms of the longer term figures about how the economy is going to perform, figures from what we call the Office of Budget Responsibility, they still say that over the medium and longer term, it's very difficult to predict yeah. what Brexit is going to mean for the economy. So I think we are in for more uncertainty, uh, certainly. What Brexit stand for? I mean, I mean I'm going to about talking about the post-Brexit stand for about security and stability mm. international community. Is it? Well, I think... Um, I is, mean, it, is it breaching leadership? Is it no, the whole of it? Well, I, look, I think there are a number of uh, different things. I mean, I think we are today, obviously, um, just looking at the news about Scotland seeking a new independence vote, the Scottish Government wanting that. There are some very different issues to be discussed about Ireland, the, 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 um, between the Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland in terms of the border. But one of the things we do with our EU partners a lot is about security and working with them to keep us safe and to keep the continent safe. And the Prime Minister is clear that relationship to continue. So I think a lot of this is going to have to be uh, negotiated. It will be the subject of the negotiations, which ministers are going to start you know, very soon. And we will have to see what the other 27 EU member states, yes. uh, what, what, what they're willing to agree with. It is, it is definitely a long, long-term situation. Yeah. It, it is a long-term situation. We, we, Article 50 process, according to the treaty it's in, takes two years. Yes. Now, it could be quicker. Uh, it could be that things are negotiated in two years, but there are then transitional arrangements after the two years. But, uh, but at this stage, it's it's off negotiations. Yeah. It's quite I heard in some analysts last night that say Theresa May could be triggered in this week. Yeah, well, down the Downing Street say triggering by the end of the month. So that's, I think, what we can expect. So that's, uh, that's the time scheme. That's the start of the yeah. process, yeah. So it's an, after, the, after the triggering, it's a take about it. Uh, could be long term for negotiation. Well, the, the process it's in the treaty is two on. years. So um, I think that. Uh, and also there have to be approvals by the European Parliament. One of the things we were debating yesterday was approval by so, the UK so Parliament. Between the negotiation time, the migrants who already came into the country, or they are coming, what's the impact will be about that? Well, that's one of the things that I think we wait to hear, is what is the date at which the government will say, those people who are here before a certain date, Yes. will be their rights are preserved and protected preserved. Right. and those who afterwards they will they will be here under new rules. We don't yet know what that data is going to be. Uh, we are actually um, back in education. The, the, you were the education secretary yeah. the last government. So uh, you, uh, that's the, in the past the children from the ethnic minority background are still under performance. What positive measures do you think the government should take to tackle the underperformance? Well, I think uh, you're absolutely right. The government I'm talking about ethnic minority. I know that. Well, I think it's I think it's everyone, yes. doesn't it? Because I think yes. we want everybody to, to do okay. well. And I think when I go to schools like Mulberry, you know, here in East London, yes. I can see a brilliant school for girls, um, which is doing fantastically well. So it's it's perfectly possible for everybody to achieve well. I think um, the government absolutely needs to focus on those areas of underperformance. And actually, what we see is there are some children from ethnic minorities who are doing better yeah. than white British children, particularly white British boys. And so I think it's understanding that. I think it's about parents having high aspirations for their children, about attaching real importance to education, about getting great teachers into those uh, schools and getting schools working together. So you've got a school that is struggling, 
making sure we've got a really good school nearby who will uh, support it. I think it's also about giving parents confidence about speaking English. Um, it's really vital, and one of the things I think that we need to focus on as a country is about making sure that people who live here speak English. Particularly for yes. mothers and fathers, they're then able to support their children with their homework, which helps obviously in terms of helping children to do well at school. Okay, that's fine. Fantastic, actually. <coughs> now, you mentioned about the Philip Hammond budget. It's, mm. um, so some people say it was a progressive, some were criticized as well. But I'm talking about, the, you know, for the current policies, more geared socialism, uh, like as uh, taxing business, including NIC, including the business rates. What do you think? Or this, that, especially the employee, you know, the self-employment mm -hmm. and uh, contribution mm -hmm. is increasing. When the government was elected to sort out the nation's finances, we are still spending more yes. than we are bringing in in taxes. And if people want rightly us to spend money on education and health services and social services and our defence and everything else, then we need to think about how we're going to balance the, uh, the, the books in terms of, of welfare. I, I actually think that I can understand why the government wants to um, equalise or, or get closer to the okay. same national insurance rates between uh, people who are employed and people who are self-employed, because there are more and more people who are self-employed in this country, which is a good thing, but also have to recognise people who are self-employed don't have the same benefits yes. and support as those who are, those who are employed. Um, but I think it's been difficult. I think if you're going yeah. to make a difficult decision like that, it's better just to explain it up front and just to say, this is not easy. Uh, actually, this is something that we had said in our manifesto, but things have changed and we're unable to fulfil that particular promise. And I think that's a better way of just explaining things rather than letting somebody else. So far, I remember, even you also know that Conservative Party government at last manifesto, they said any contribution, mm. whether the self-employment or um, the state mm. employment, that will not increase. Mm. But Philip Hammond, <laughs> in, her, in his recent ballot, he increased the, yeah. the, you know, the NI contribution. So it's a contradictory or I mean, within the party policy, even the government. It, look, it is, it, is a, it is a change. And if you're going to make that change as, you, a, as a minister... You're a bold, big, be bold for change. Or? Well, I think you have to explain to people why you're making a change. And I think that actually what happened was that explanation we didn't hear it last week um, in the budget. I think people, people understand. You know, we've been through, with Brexit, uh, the economy recovering. It's taking a long time to get back to where we were in terms of wages growing and productivity and everything else. I think if you explain to people why you need to make a change, why actually you said one thing in a manifesto, but it's not possible to fulfill that, then I think that's better than actually just either not making the, the, the change, you feel it needs to be made for your finances, or trying somehow to uh, not explain it. Um, and, uh, and that's why I think uh, if Philip Hammond, as the Chancellor, decides, the Prime Minister, this is a new policy that needs to be introduced, then actually it's better just to, as I say, just to explain it uh, and to accept that actually that, that doesn't fulfil the spirit of what we said in the uh, manifesto. Um, but there are reasons for, for doing that. One of them is a very good reason, which is that more people are now getting self-employed, which means actually that we are uh, not raising the taxes that are accepted, which we need to fund our essential public services. Back to again Brexit bill, you know, they just passed the Brexit bill from the Lord, House of Lords and said, land of victory, people said, it. even the analyst also commented. But uh, Nick Clegg, the deputy, former Deputy Prime Minister, he criticised the, um, the, the, in the terms of uh, EU national right to stay in here. Uh, how do you define about the, this terms of condition of the EU national right to stay in here, how we protect it? If, if it's not going on well. If the negotiations are not yeah. going well. Well, I think there are um, things that will, see will be negotiated, and the Prime Minister has given us assurance about wanting to negotiate early, or discuss early with the EU partners, about giving EU citizens living here in the UK absolutely the right to, to be here, and the same with British nationals living in other EU member states. Now, there are people um, uh, who have said, well, actually, the, the government should give a unilateral undertaking now. And in fact, last summer, I said that we should confirm right now that those EU nationals living in this country have nothing to fear and should stay. But the government has taken the decision that they couldn't or wouldn't do that. 
um, Prime Minister said that's the early priority for her, but there are people like Nick Clegg who spoke in the debate yesterday, and there are other MPs as well, uh, who wanted um, an early assurance and the government to just to yeah, say yes. that, say yeah. that now. Look, there are people living with great uncertainty who can't make plans for their yes. lives. And EU nationals make a huge contribution to this country. There are yeah. 80,000 of them working mm -hmm. in our NHS and social care. You know, yeah. we need them, we value them, we want them to, to stay here. I hope the government is able to get an early agreement with other EU countries about their position because it's absolutely essential. Yes. You know, you know, the, I know that Gina Miller already given the the, she went in the high court, then go to the Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. If the any signal, negative signal from the European Union regarding the point that you explained, that, do you think that any consequence will arise, or how do that British government will react after that? Well, okay. I know it's a prediction, but it's we, very we, can, we may be predicting what will happen in tomorrow, but. Well, it's very. Look, I think it's. I think it's important. I think the first thing is people should not uh, should not worry. They should not make immediate decisions. They should wait, obviously, to see how discussions uh, go. I don't detect any signs that there are any ministers in the government who want EU citizens not to be in this country. There's no. I, it's inconceivable that the British government has the ability to ask people to to leave or to know where people are, are you know, are living or anything like like that. Um, so I think we should work on the basis that the Prime Minister is, that the negotiations will go successfully, uh, at least as far as EU citizens are concerned and their rights to, to, to stay here. Um, but obviously it's difficult to know exactly what's going to be uh, agreed until those negotiations start. What about the, how, should, how should the EU negotiate any internal changes after a privacy exit? Well, I think one of the decisions that has been taken by the Prime Minister, as she set out in her speech she gave at Lancaster House in January, yes. is that she wants to prioritise ending free movement to people in the European Union over continuing single market membership. Now what that means is that at the moment our businesses here in the UK have access to a market of 500 million people across the EU in terms of buying and selling goods and services without all the red tape that you often get if you are doing the same with other countries, you know, yeah. including uh, for example, Bangladesh, unless you negotiate what's called a free trade agreement. Now that membership single market, uh, according to the Prime Minister's decision, is going to end. That is going to have an impact on jobs and businesses here. Now, businesses are very innovative. They yes, will, I'm sure, find a way to of make course, the new situation course, yeah. work for them. And many of us want the government to negotiate a full free trade agreement with the European Union in order to preserve some of those arrangements and agreements that we have at the moment. So my constituency of Loughborough, I have, for example, I went to see a food exporting business and they export packets of sauces across the European Union. And so for them, having the same regulations about health and safety and about food products and everything else, labelling, is really important. And that's the sort of thing that I think ministers are going to be busy negotiating and discussing with the other European countries over the course of the next two years. So there will be there will be some changes here internally. Yes. Um, I mean, obviously, the other thing is we won't be subject to the European Court of Justice, uh, which is a court that can decide matters that have happened here in the UK, and they decide that in the European Court. The Prime Minister wants to end that too. So there will be some changes. Parliament will be making all of the laws. We won't be having laws made for us by uh, the European Parliament and European Commission. Um, but obviously, it will take time for that new process and that new system to come into force. Uh, in terms of migration and uh, you know the skilled workers that mm -hmm. you mentioned as well, even we have got something from the papers, independent BBC as well, the government planning. Uh, even Amber um, Home Secretary mm -hmm. also told that, that they will planning to some some skilled worker from the Commonwealth countries. Yes. So, do you think is uh, after the Brexit there is a uh, huge opportunity from the Commonwealth countries regarding the immigration and the skilled worker? I do, and I think the Commonwealth undoubtedly is where a lot of ministers are looking to negotiate early free trade uh, agreements. And I hope that Bangladesh yes, will be a key it. part of, of that. Yeah. You know, we know um, I have a large uh, Bangladesh yeah, community Bangladesh in Loughborough, yeah. and uh, they contribute hugely. And many have lived here for many, many years. They have lots of family here, um, and I know there's also an issue about Bangladeshi restaurants in terms of bringing uh, skilled workers and chefs. Yes over as well. So I think there they are, are actually in all of this struggling about the Absolutely. skill worker. So I think there are definitely opportunities. Um, and uh, ministers and Liam Fox and others have been talking about the Commonwealth. So uh, but obviously 
um, that's a part of you know, where we recruit people from, where we do trade with. There are lots of other countries around the world, and uh, this is an opportunity for businesses to uh, to go out and speak to all of them. Yes, yes. There is, there is some uh, report uh, from Guardian, Independent, Telegraph, even the CNN and the Sky as well that uh, after the Brexit, maybe Europe maybe introduce some US style visa. That's a, they will do maybe or from the online they can travel to mm -hmm. you within the 27 countries you need a, a, a online application for the, your past permit is that will be applied for British people as well or do you think because if we have a British passport now I can go to the travel anywhere within the 27 countries but after the Brexit what well, I think you raise a very good point about how things might change. Now, again, I don't know what ministers are planning in terms of things like uh, visas. And, of course, this doesn't just depend on what we want as a country. It depends on what the other 27 member states decide. Um, and I think we have to be very conscious of the border in Ireland. I go back to that yeah. point. You know, we have lots and lots of citizens who travel to Northern Ireland, to the Republic of Ireland, all the time. Um, and actually, I don't think they would want to have uh, visas, and whether there's something, what's called a soft border, something can be agreed there. Yeah. Yes, it is possible that, uh, depending on how negotiations go, that there could be some form of additional travel document that people travelling from the UK into Europe, into European countries, would need to, to show uh, in order to, to do that. So I think we've taken yeah. for granted the freedom and ease with which we have been able to travel around Europe um, and people coming to the UK and then go on to travel to Europe have been able to, to do. And we see that obviously it it's not quite as easy when you go to the US or to other countries. You, know, you have to apply for uh, special documents no, and, and fill in uh, you know, uh, forms on the aeroplane and that sort of thing in order to be able to, to get in. Um, and again, I don't know what is planned by, by ministers, but it will depend again on the discussions I think with the European Union. EU nationals are already living here in the United Kingdom and the Prime Minister and Home Secretary have been very clear that they want people to be able to stay, that their rights are not affected by Brexit, so nobody's rights about staying here or anything else have changed uh, yet. Um, and we don't know obviously what is going to be negotiated yes. with the other EU countries. Um, what's being talked about is a date being set by which if people were here, then uh, they will be able to stay and their rights will not be affected. In terms of non-EU migrants, yeah. well I think that's, again, I think um, people are concerned generally, EU, non-EU. Um, and we have to see really what's going to happen to the numbers and I think we see what happens to the different industries. It will be about skills and whether people um, coming here uh, have the skills that I think are needed, whether it's in our NHS or whether it's in high-tech industries or in academia, uh, and seeing whether people are going to be offering uh, those skills. I think that's the way in which government policy is going to develop. But at the moment, obviously, it's being debated within government, um, and we wait to hear those announcements. Uh, actually, we are going to move to some world <laughs> politics as well. Yes, well like, I know you are the interesting figure as well. So, should Trump still visit UK under the popular pressure from the citizens? You know, it's a very big question. You know, everywhere in the world. So, what do you think? Well, you're absolutely right that uh, Trump and his visit here has caused an awful lot of uh, concern. I've had especially, a lot of emails. Yeah, I mean, just interrupting, especially in London, we are also, yeah. also uh, criticised. Trump's situation. Well, a lot of people are very unhappy, yeah. obviously, about the election of uh, Donald Trump. Um, and I've had a lot of emails from my constituents in Loughborough oh, really yes, opposing yes. him coming here on a state visit. And I do understand what they're saying, and, and I think that uh, you know the things that Donald Trump has said about women are particularly unacceptable. Yes. And I think it's you know it's it's concerning some of the, the ways uh, in which he um, just says things yeah, and, uh, without it. necessarily it's certain, certain community already. Yeah. So people are concerned. I understand that. On the other hand, I would just say that I think America is a very important ally for the of United course, Kingdom. They're a very of important course. country, and it's not just about the president. It's about all no, the other people all. we work with in, in America. Um, and so I think that's why the invitation for a visit was extended. I think that um, it's not going to happen uh, immediately. Uh, I suspect that Donald Trump is talking about him perhaps going to Scotland um, and there will be ways 
of having an uh, important visit without perhaps necessarily having everything that goes with it. And there was also talk about it, whether he might or might not speak to Parliament. I know a lot of my colleagues feel that actually that would be a very bad idea that often happens much later in someone's presidency. But I think it is important that we keep communication open with the United States. And actually, Theresa May was able, when she went there, to get Donald Trump to commit to NATO, which is hugely important for the security and stability of Europe. And that's, you know, that, that, that is very, very important commitment that she, that she secured. So we have to keep working at this. I mean, I don't think anyone ever said uh, that yeah, uh, yeah. international relationships are always easy and straightforward. Uh, but, uh, but I think that uh, having that relationship with the US is important us in the United Kingdom, right, yes. and I think it's important exactly. for other countries as well. We do have a good relationship. We're going to have a new immigration bill as a result of leaving the European Union, yeah. and one of the debates is going to be about how non-EU citizens are treated in the same way or, or differently from EU yeah. citizens. There were lots of promises made during the referendum campaign by those who wanted to leave the European Union, and I was not on that side of the argument. I, I thought we were better to stay. Yes. I, I know, I know. Uh, but uh, that actually people would be able to come into this country more easily. Um, I think immigration policy will remain very tight. The Prime Minister is a former Home Secretary and people in this country are clearly concerned about immigration and the impact yeah. it has uh, on communities and, uh, and everything. And so I don't see that it's going to get any easier for people to be, uh, to be moving here. We'll be, I think, more certain about the skills and the industries, the sectors yes, in which we need people to, to welcome people here. Thank you for the condition of the uh, post-Brexit. Uh, I, I think it's... I know it's its identity, but... Yeah, exactly. It's very difficult, I think. I, I think people did expect there to be um, a, a hit on the economy, and fortunately that hasn't proven to be the case, in the sense that's good news for everybody living here. Obviously the fall in the value of the pound um, that does hit people. It hits people when they uh, go abroad, obviously it hits people um, in terms of uh, those um, bringing goods in from outside to sell here or to use in their businesses. And we'll obviously have to wait to see when Article 50 is triggered by the Prime Minister and throughout the negotiations, and a lot will depend, I think, on the final deal that is agreed with the European Union as to the impact it has on our economy. And if you look at the budget that Philip Hammond, the Chancellor, announced last week yes. in terms of the longer term figures about how the economy is going to perform, figures from what we call the Office of Budget Responsibility, they still say that over the medium and longer term it's very difficult to predict yeah. what Brexit is going to mean for the economy. So I think we are in for more uncertainty, uh, certainly. Can you clarify about the What is about security and working with them to keep us safe and to keep the continent safe. And the big Article 50 process, according to the treaty it's in, takes two years. Two years. Now, it could be quicker, uh, it could be that things are negotiated in two years, but there are then transitional arrangements after the two years. But uh, but at this stage, as I said, it's not negotiations, yeah. it's quite I hard to say. I heard this last night that said, Theresa May could be triggered in this week, or maybe, maybe she says by the end of the month. month. No, she says but by the end of the month, and that's what Downing Street are now saying. No, well, Downing Street say triggering by the end of the month, so that's, I think, what we can expect. So that's, uh, that's the time scheme. That's the start of the yeah. process, yeah. Support Philip Hammond's design. Some of the things that I think we wait to hear is what is the date at which the government will say those people who are here before a certain yeah. date yes. will be their rights are preserved yeah, and protected, preserved, and those who afterwards they will they will be here under new rules. And we don't yet know what that date is going to be. Right. It depends on the European Union. It does. I think it does. This in Bali cleared the yeah. uh, contribution. So it's a contradictory or and within we, the party policy. Even the government. It, look, it is, it, is a, it is a change, and if you're going to make that change as a, as a minister. Be bold, be, be bold for change. Or well, I think you have to explain to people why you're making a change, and I think that actually what happened was that explanation, we didn't hear it last week um, in the budget. I think people, people understand, you know, we've been through with Brexit, uh, the economy recovering, it's taking a long time to get back to where we were in terms of wages growing and productivity and everything else. I think if you explain to people why you need to make a change, why actually you said one thing in a manifesto, but it's not possible to fulfil that, then I think that's better than actually just either not making the, the, the change, you feel it needs to be made for your finances, or trying somehow to uh, not explain it. Um, and, uh, and that's why I think uh, if Philip Hammond, as the Chancellor, decides, the Prime Minister, this is a, a new policy that needs to be introduced, then actually it's better just to, as I say, just to explain it 
uh, and to accept that actually that, that doesn't fulfil the spirit of what we said in the uh, manifesto. Um, but there are reasons for, for if the negotiations are not yeah. going well. Well, I think there are um, things that obviously will be negotiated, and the Prime Minister has given this assurance about wanting to negotiate early, or we'll discuss early with EU partners, about giving EU citizens living here in the UK absolute the right to, to be here, and the same with British nationals living in other EU member states. Now, there are people um, uh, who have said, well, actually, the, the government should give a unilateral undertaking now. And in fact, last summer, I said that we should confirm right now that those EU nationals living in this country have nothing to fear and should stay. But the government has taken the decision that they couldn't or wouldn't do that. Um, Prime Minister said that's an early priority for her. But there are people like Nick Clegg, who spoke in the debate yesterday, and there are other MPs as well. Uh, who wanted um, an early assurance and the government to just to yeah, say yeah, that, say yeah. that now. Look, there are people living with great uncertainty who can't make plans for their yes. lives. And EU nationals make a huge contribution to this country. There are yeah. 80,000 of them working mm -hmm. in our NHS and social care. You know, yeah. We need them, we value them, we want them to, to stay here. I hope the government is able to get an early agreement with other EU countries about their position because it's absolutely essential. I think one of the decisions that has been taken by the Prime Minister as she set out in her speech she gave at Lancaster House in January yes. is that she wants to prioritise ending free movement of people in the European Union over continuing single market membership. Now what that means is that at the moment our businesses here in the UK have access to a market of 500 million people across the EU in terms of buying and selling goods and services without all the red tape that you often get if you are doing the same with other countries. You know, there will be there will be some changes here internally. Yes. Um, and obviously the other thing is we won't be subject to the European Court of Justice, uh, which is a court that can decide matters that have happened here in the UK and they decide that in the European Court. The Prime Minister wants to end that too. So there will be some changes. Parliament will be making all of the laws. We won't be having laws made for us by uh, the European Parliament and European Commission. Um, but obviously it will take time for that new process and that new system to come into force. Uh, look, uh, we are very close to the search for as well, I know, but uh, uh, I, I understand you are very busy and you give me the time, so I'm very, very, it's a honor for me as well, honor for the channel as well. So, what is your message to the wider community, including Bangladesh? Well, first of all, can I start with a message to my community in Loughborough? I just want to say thank you for their friendship and support. It's a privilege to be their Member of Parliament and to deal with their concerns and their queries and their thoughts on everything that is going on. And I think to the wider viewers and to people in Bangladesh, I'd just like to say that I think Bangladesh is a very important country for the United Kingdom, both as a trading partner um, as a Commonwealth partner, but as a, an important just partner around the world. I think the UK government wants to work closely with the Bangladesh uh, government and to support them. Um, and we look forward to continuing that relationship. And uh, thank you to Chan Lai for inviting me to be here today. Thank you very much for coming in here. Pleasure. Thanks very much. Priya Dasok, at the Konamra Kothawalam, British Parliament Emanuel Shangshat Shadosho, Shabak Education Secretary, Conservative Dolet. অত্যন্ত প্রভাবশালী সদস্য যিনি মাত্র ব্রেক্সিট বিলটি পার হাউস অফ কমন্স থেকে পাস করে দিয়েছেন এবং ইনোর মসলে যে বিলটি হাউস অফ লর্ডসে ল্যান্ডমার্ক ভিক্টরি হিসেবে যেটা পাস হয়ে গিয়েছে সেটা নিয়ে আমরা এতক্ষণ কথা বললাম নিক রাইট অনারেবল এমপি নিকি মরগানের সাথে আমরা এই জায়গায় বসে শুধু এখন যা ঘটছে সেটাকে আমরা বলতে পারি এবং প্রত্যাশা সম্ভাবনা প্রেডিকশনটা আমরা করতে পারি আগামী কালকে কি হবে সারা ব্রিটেন জুড়ে এবং সারা বিশ্ব থেকে যে বিষয়টি নিয়ে তোলপাড় চলছে সবাই যেখানে উদ্বিগ্ন উৎকণ্ঠা হয়ে গেছে ইমিগ্রেশন কি হচ্ছে ব্রিটেনে যারা আছেন ইউরোপ থেকে যারা আসছেন কিংবা ব্রিটেনের যেসব নাগরিক ইউরোপে রয়েছেন তাদের অবস্থান কি হবে যে নেগোসিয়েটের কথাটি বলা হচ্ছে দুই বছর পর্যন্ত সেই নেগোসিয়েটের পর্যায়ে যদি সত্যি সত্যি কঠিন পর্যায়ে চলে যায় তখন কি হবে এই সব নিয়ে আমরা কথা বললাম শুনলেন কথাগুলো নেকি মরগান এমপির সাথে তাকে আমরা জানাচ্ছি ধন্যবাদ আমাদের পক্ষ থেকে আর আপনারা যারা এতক্ষণ আমাদের অনুষ্ঠানটি দেখেন আপনাদের সকলকে আবারও প্রীতি শুভেচ্ছা আর ভালোবাসা এবং আপনাদের আগামী জীবনটি সুন্দর এবং সার্থকভাবে গড়ে উঠুক এই প্রত্যাশায় খোদা হাফেজ